Julie's parents had this conflict. He, he, she married an aristocrat, and she was of another class. And so she had this conflict with her husband, and there was the battle of the sexes, and it is the basis of this psychological play, where Julie <coughs> well, I want to tell you something. I had a few days rest and I sang like Lily Pons. <laughs> One hour with you. And this golden voice goes. <laughs> now, in order to understand the play, you work out the psychology of the mother. So Julie arrives fractured by her mother's fighting with the father. So her attitude as a woman to a man is already completely without a base. Now, the example is so great that he brings on already a fractured person with an uncertain inside. Now, I don't know how fractured you all are, but I think that you also came from parents that had uh, difficulties, how many people say yes? yes? You see. And so you have to, you arrive. Now don't play that simple person when you play a character. Don't play a simply than you are yourself when you arrive on the scene. You're already made. And uh, Julie in the society does not know how to protect herself. She uh, and I think that's extremely brilliant of him to write a woman who is so forceful, who has absolutely no idea how to protect herself against a man who she should know had brutality and had vulgarity in, in him. Because as he reveals himself in the play, It's extremely difficult, but everything this man does is touched with a self that is absolutely, I want me. Uh, if somebody touches his hair, she says, don't do that. And I want the wine with the stem. And I, this is just right, a little more of this. And everything is touched with an, an aim for appetite. Give me what I want. Feed me where I want. Well, if you're smart and you're look at him, you'd say, well, that's a man to be careful of. <laughs> now, from Miss Strindberg's point of view, because, and she says, my sympathies were with my father, yet I took my mother's side because I didn't understand the facts. I'd learned from her to distrust men, and I think most of us learn that we have got to tr distrust men, don't we? Yes or no? No, I'm not asking you if you distrust men. I'm talking to the man. No, you don't have to distrust men. But all those little girls from the Middle West that come to New York. So Mr. Strindberg says, you have to play, Julie, with deep psychological weakness that comes because her self was already fractured on arrival into the play. Her anger, her strength, you uh, never feel that something worthwhile is going to arrive out of it. So Mr. Strindberg takes you into this uh, trap and takes you out. Nobody wins in a Strindberg play. He's a pessimist. They're un unusual people in unusual situations. Now, I'm going to ask you, when you work on the play, to work carefully on every line to see who she talks to when 
when she comes in, she's having, uh, she having something brewed so her pregnant dog should not have a baby. Now, the reason she, she does that, she says, because my dog's an aristocrat and he's, he's got a mongrel. I don't want those. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? Now, we don't want our good dogs to be bred that way, do we? Hmm? And yet all of us don't know how to say, what is good breeding? How can I breed uh, somebody? I'm not going to breed them from my own class. That's over. So uh, I don't know. I meet a nice person and I say, he's nice. <laughs> now that's very innocent. I don't watch him enough to see what the mask is, and this is what you must do in life now. Will you do it? Yeah. You must watch carefully before you make any decisions. <laughs> Just watch the behavior, yes? And I, I don't know why I'm talking to the girls, because this is the girls' play. And so, uh, he was a Freudian playwright. This makes him and in the plays there's an intensity which comes and you get in every way. Uh, he is the most intense playwright that you will meet. He understood that people were in their world, and he did not take the Ibsen point of view that the society would get better and perhaps would better the man. He said the trap in Strindberg is an inner trap and comes from transitions and from people having no way to clarify themselves and nobody to clarify them. Now, I think that's about time to read Yes? Okay. Now, that's enough to guide you into the play. <laughs>